Right, so I thought it was a bit time to uh, put together a bit of a video talking about um, the Lunt Solar Wedge, as you can see here. Um, this is my Solar Wedge. I've had it now for oh, just over a year, a couple of years, something like that. Um, great piece of kit. Can wholeheartedly recommend one to anybody. Um, but thought for the purpose of today, I would, uh, as I say, put together a bit of a, a bit of a walk through, um, explaining a few things. Um, more importantly, how it's put together. Um, how, lump, how the wedges, or how this particular wedge works um, and in particular a little modification that you can do with it, can do to it to uh, make it suitable for um, for say using as an ERF with a, with a CAC filter or for instance if um, you were imaging at a very long focal length and exposure times were just getting a little bit too short and the image was getting a little bit too dark, too dark. Okay, right, so um, I'm going to sit down for this bit, I think, so I want to show you a few bits and pieces with it. Right, so, um, first things first, let's have a look what we've got here. Um, I'm going to take um, the back off, right? Um, it's very important at this stage that you realise um, doing anything like this to your Lunt Solar Wedge will completely invalidate your warranty. Um, and you know, Lunt are going to give you no, um, you're going to get no comeback from Lunt from this at all. So if you choose to do what I'm doing, do it entirely at your own risk. Okay, right, so now I'll have a little look at the back to start off with. We can see here, I've got two little screws. I'm going to use the uh, screwdriver here just to take these out. Let's have a little look at what's going, inside, going on inside it. Okay, so just bear with me a moment while we take these out. I'm going to be really careful with these screws as well. Put it down like that, that'll probably make things easier. Screw jobs ever so slightly too large. So we take that screw out, keep that safe. And let's take the other one out. There we go. Okay, let me just take that screwdriver down. Right, so, oh, not quite out yet. Let's just take this out. Like this, there we go. So, whoops, wheel drivers escape in there. Um, right, so what we've got here, keep them screws safe. Um, this is the back. Um, this is a heat sink for the wedge. Um, you can see here, it's a piece of finned, I presume it's aluminium, feels like aluminium. Okay, and it's got this red central stopper here, warns of it being a hot surface. This is where the exit beam from the, uh, from, from the back of the wedge. We can see there, okay. Um, this is where 95% of the light that passes through the wedge finally goes, which is onto this surface here. Now, this thing is just, it's actually just pushed into place. And if I, there we go, just push it out. Or you can see, a bit of a plug, if you like. Um, presume, it's, presume it's an anodized aluminium. Okay, and then that, as you can see, goes in the back of this heat sink. You might just be able to make out there, um, there's, there we go, so, so there, you can just see there and there, there's some pieces of, it appears to be something like um, probably a silicon seal or something like that, that holds it in place. Um, I have read on the internet a few people who've said that um, they've complained of smoke coming out of the back of the wedge. I wonder, I think it's only me hazard and a guess, if we're getting the exit beam hitting that, those um, those pieces of silicon, those could well smoke off. Okay, so just a thought there, entirely my thought as well. Okay, so we've got this heat sink at the back. Next thing next, let's have a little look um, just here a moment, how, it, how, it, how it's put together. Okay, so we've got, you can just make out there one, two, three and four screws. So I'm going to put this down for a moment and um, we'll, we'll just take these screws out. Just bear with me a little while. Takes a few moments obviously just to unscrew these. Not quite out there. I'm just going to put those safe. Those screws are slightly longer so I want to keep them um, apart from the first screws that we took out, which holds the heat sink on the back. Right, so there we go. Like that. And you'll see here, 
I'll just bring it back up to the camera so you can see. Um, we've got the sticker there. Okay, that's telling us a few things about it. It says tell us read the instructions, all the usual things about eye damage, saying contact Lunt if you've got any questions. Um, purpose of that sit sticker as well, it's also a security seal so that Lunt know if you've been doing what I've done, which is taking the wedge apart. Um, if you have, like I say, do you do so completely at your own risk. Um, but don't expect any service from Lunt because they will know that you've taken it apart. Okay, so last screw here, just going to hold this in place because I don't want it to go toppling off. There we go, keep that screw safe. And gently, what I'm going to do is just, there we go, just peel there, that's it, peel that off there. Now, um, this is the section with the actual wedge itself. Now, what came as a surprise to me, um, quite wrongly, obviously, I, I assumed that wedges, um, solar wedges, were a, were a prism in the sense um, of, a, of a, you know, a traditional triangular prism. This actually is a, you can just about make it out. Let's see if we can get some reflections on the camera screen. It generally helps if we can see reflections. Ah, there we go. Okay. Um, you can see there, um, let's see if we can turn this around and get the reflections. There, you can just make out there, if you look at the reflections on screen, this is actually a tapered piece of glass. Now, I'm not exactly sure of the exact thicknesses, um, and I'm not prepared to take it out. You can see that it's, again, silicon sealed in place there. That's obviously... Um, that's obviously a line in it, so I'm not going to take it out because I don't want to kill my lump wedge completely. But as I say, let's just rotate that. Try and get the reflections again. Um, it is this tapered piece of glass, which which quite surprised me. So this bit section back here is completely hollow. Um, again, feels like a solid mill, milled piece of aluminium. Great build quality, can't fault it at all. Okay, so there you go. So that is your your wedge section. You see the light reflecting in it there. Um, but just a tapered, there we go, got it there. Just a tapered piece of glass. Let's see if we can bring that back into, into view. Right, so there you go. That's that, that's bit, that bit there. Final section is this bit which we've just taken off which obviously has the the nose piece goes into the back of the telescope and also the um, the eyepiece holder there inside there and you can just about make this out I think in this light you might just be able to see some writing going on just where the, you can see the reflection of the light above me there um, let's just try and get this in there we go. That's ah, that's not a bad view. That's a neutral density filter. That's um, it's a B and W. Um, it says 48, referring to the to the thread on it. its 48 mil thread, hence it's screwing into the back of there. It says 110 ND3 10 BL a thousand times. Okay, so it's a it's a neutral it's a ND3 neutral density filter. It provides a thousand times reduction in the amount of light passing through. Okay, you can see on the top here, I've got a few little scratches and things where the set screw from um, from from the eyepiece reducer is, is sat there. Now, okay, so um, I talked about before um, with the Lunt wedge, um, this piece of this piece of ND glass in here is absolutely essential if you're going to use the wedge visually. In fact, you probably want to be using also um, something like a variable polarizing filter as well to re reduce um, brightness levels down to something that's a little bit more comfortable. Um, however, though, um, and this will be absolutely fine if you're imaging full disk um, or even, you know, um, maybe two or two, maybe up to a couple of times with a Barlow. Um, however, if you start um, cranking up the magnification a bit more, maybe using a power mate, something like a, a 2.5 times power mate or a 5 times Teleview power mate or Barlow, um, what you're going to find is that on your CCD the light levels start reducing um, rapidly, you've got to really start increasing the exposure which then leaves you more vulnerable to the effects of scene. Okay, So what we ideally need to be able to do is take that filter out. Now. Um, I had a long hard look at this, um, maybe 
Let's see if we can get this on camera. Um, you can maybe just about see on the inside of there, okay? Um, see it kind of catching the light where, where it's uh, the reflection is around the periphery of the filter. That has been well and truly loctited in there. Um, the, there's absolutely no way you're going to get that out. Um, the, there's nothing to, to, to get a binding on in terms of gripping it and pulling it out. Um, the same token as well, um, it, it's, it's a solid Loctite, it's not something that can be picked out. So that filter is pretty much well and truly stuck to that. Um, however, there is a few little tricks we can do to get it out. Um, namely, we can unscrew the top. Now, initially, I really couldn't get this undone at all. And what I ended up using, if I just pop that down a second, um, whoops, excuse me, um, was one of these bower straps, okay, adjustable bower straps like this. Um, that'll go around there, let's just get back in shot, that'll go around there like that, um, pulls tight, a bit difficult this doing it with um, everything floating in the air, and then you just grip, okay, and that, that will unscrew. We use these for the PST mods as well, great, great tool, only a couple of pounds of, um, you know, the usual online stores. Right, um, so this thing here will unscrew like this, so we can take that out. This is just a solid piece of um, aluminium, again I presume, feels like it, the density suggests to me it's aluminium probably, um, and um, it, it's, it's been milled out. You can see in there it's got a textured surface to avoid reflections of, from light, although you can still see it's picking up reflections. Maybe um, if you wanted to you could flock the inside of the surface, but you, you know, you've potentially got issues there then with um, the exit being catching it and, and catching the flocking on fire. Okay, um, let's come back to this bit. So this is our section with the ND filter. You can see it in there. Um, can't see a reflection, but we definitely can't see through it. Um, you know, it, it's well and truly doing its job, letting um, a thousand times less light through than, than normal. Um, now. The way I see it, the, um, I have looked at this quite closely, there's physically no way we're going to get that out of there. That's been screwed in and then Loctited from beneath. I also suspect Loctite on, on the inner threads as well. So we, we, we can't remove that. Um, but, like I say, what we do want to do is um, do away with this. And the, there's actually a really easy way to do this. And completely by chance, what I discovered was um, that the Stellaview diagonal here, I've got my 2 inch Stellaview diagonal okay if I unscrew this what you'll see quite conveniently as if by magic that is exactly the same thread on there so now you can see I've done away with any kind of neutral density filtration in there, which is um, for imaging purposes or for using the um, the wedge as an ERF in, in a CAC setup, um, this is exactly what we want to do. Okay, I must reiterate, it's un completely unsafe for visual use at this point with this neutral density filtration re removed. Please do not do it. You will lose your eyesight. Okay, so. You can see there, we, we, we can remove that, um, and there we go, we, we've got our ND free wedge. Okay, so, I'm um, going to put this back together now, again, really easy, bear with me, I'm going to sit down and do this, because it's a bit easier to do than stood up. Um, so, we just move that Stella view wedge out of the way, we'll move that out of the way for the moment. Um, so, next thing's next. Um, I'm going to get this on the right way around, that's the wrong way around, you can tell by the, the logo there, the logo, there we go, we got it on the right way there, and again, we get the right screws, they're slightly longer, this is the tricky bit, everything wants to slide about, and I'm going to go this way, whoops, screws stuck between my fingers there, there we go, I'm going to just put that in there. Um, it's a bit like putting a tyre spare wheel back on a car when you've had a puncture this is you don't want to tighten the first screw up really tight to start off with. So we want to keep a bit of slack going on in there. Okay, 
Don't forget we've also got our sticker. So we'll just stick him down. He helps us to work located. Put the other screw back in. There we go. Whoops, magnetic screwdriver not being helpful there. Let's just put this in place. Do, 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 do. Oops, put that down level. It gives me another hand to work with. There with me here. There we go. That's going in nicely now. I think I've got the screwdriver ever so slightly too large for these threads, for this head on the screw, sorry. But I'm not too. So put that back in. Whoops, make sure we get the right screw thread on there. Put that one back in. Tighten that up. Noisy cars outside at the moment. And um, one more, where's it gone? There it is. Okay, so put that back in there. Let's just screw that in. It's also my opinion um, that if you look at the um, the CAC wedge, that um, I'm just going to tighten these up now, all four of them. If you look at the CAC wedge that Lug does for its 152mm scope, then this is in fact um, a Herschel wedge like this um, with, with the CAC filter in there. I believe, again my opinion, um, that they do this because it's a much more effective ERF. Obviously the Lug 152 is kicking out considerably more energy than a smaller scope. Bear in mind for their cap diagonals, Lunt only recommends going up to 100mm aperture. Um, that's because it, the, um, the, the intensity, if you like, isn't going to do the coatings on the filter any good. Thermal expansion and all that sort of stuff. However, the wedge, like this, can quite safely be used on refractors up to um, six inches in diameter. Okay, so last screw back in here, got that on the right way, just double check there. Um, let's get this last screw back in. There we go. So that's all back together as it as was. Um, let's just bring this back so you can see now. There you go, you can see the reflections, that's my, that's my blinds on the, on the window. Okay, we should see, whoops, let's have a look. There we go, So and then it's really easy, as I say, if I want to go between visual mode and imaging mode, I just r remove the IP shoulder there and replace it back with the um, with the original lump one. So there you go. One lump wedge taken apart, put back together, um, and how all it works inside. Okay, thank